Hello once again everyone, this is the KMN 1971 back with another installment of my comic book collection spotlight videos. This week I'll be focusing in on my indie keys, minor, um, well, minor, medium, and major, well, more on actually the minor and medium range, with the exception of two books. Uh, all of these books can be had under three digits. And I've also been tagged by fellow YouTube community member Gory J for my top 10 uh, modern books, which I'll be tagging on to um, the end of this video. And thank you very much for tagging me, Gory. Very much appreciated, man. So getting on with it, Akira number one from uh, Epic Comics. Now, some of these books um, will be from imprints from DC and Marvel Comics, but they are... Uh, creator owned properties and many of them well or all of them rather have uh, ended up going into other um, publishing venues so Akira number one from Epic Comics part of my holy trinity of, of the my top three anime that I really liked of Akira Ghost in the Shell and Robotech the Macross Saga Beneath the Planet of the Apes number one from uh, Gold Key Comics, the only Gold Key comic in my collection. Um, it also contains an eight pro protest poster, which is pretty cool. And uh, just make sure that that poster is included when uh, purchase uh, when acquiring this book, if if you choose to. This is the first Planet of the Apes in comic book form, as far as I as far as I can tell. We have the Boys Number One from uh, Wildstorm, which is a uh, DC imprint, but um, after about I think the sixth issue, it ended up well, DC ended up cutting ties with the book, not necessarily because it was um selling uh badly, but there was this uh, I want to say uh, either a hamster or a gerbil incident in one of these issues with, within the first six issues or so, and uh, it moved on to another publisher. But this is another book that allegedly is being optioned for um, a series on Cinemax and being produced by Seth Rogen. So we'll see how that goes. The Destroyer Duck, number one, which is the first appearance of Gru the Wanderer, a creation from uh, Sergio Aragones, who I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Red Star number one from Epic Comics, a uh, creation from Jim Stalin that started off in Epic Illustrated Magazine, uh, had his own graphic novel, and then moved on to the Epic Comics imprint, where it went, um, where eventually though it ended up moving on to First Comics, and I don't know where and the property ended up after that. But this is another property that's been allegedly optioned for a TV series, which as long as it's good. I'm all for it because I love this series. This was one of my um, favorites from when I was a, a youngster. And, um, but I don't want it to see it get some cheesy um, sci fi channel budget with uh, cheesy special effects. If the series can't be done correctly, I'd rather not see it done at all. Hip Hop Family Tree, number one. This is the Newberry Comics exclusive variant, which is an obvious homage to Marvel Comics 25th and 75th anniversary um, covers. And this is just awesome. Uh, has Run DMC, NWA, uh, Flavor Flav, of course, centered prominently, um, Biggie, Tupac. It's just fantastic. Only a $10, $15 issue, but I love it. Judge Dredd from Eagle Comics, number one. This is the first uh, comic book, well, the first American comic book appearance of Judge Dredd, fully illustrated by uh, Brian Boland, as well as the cover. Kick-Ass, number one. Great series, great movie, um, and great miniseries, too. I want to definitely look up Kick-Ass, number two, and, uh, well, Kick-Ass, two, and three, uh, miniseries also see how uh, see where uh, Millar took the franchise number two would have uh, the, the second movie would have been a lot better with a, a bit better of a budget I think Macross number one uh, became uh, uh, 
with issue number two, the title became uh, Robotech, the Macro Saga. And this book was pretty much a ghost when trying to search this one out when I was a kid. Let me try to get this better into it. There we go. Oh, maybe not. So, yeah. Um, great book to have. And like I said, part of my uh, holy trinity of anime. Of old school anime, I guess. Malibu Sun, number 13. No matter what, te what anyone tells you, this is not the first appearance of Spawn. <clears throat> The way I look at Marvel Ages and or books like um, Absolute Vertigo, previews of, uh, of comics, they're nice little additions for collectors to have, kind of like that ad for the Wolverine back in the old 1970s, some of the uh, 1970s Marvel comics, Daredevil 115, for example. Um, they're nice little additions to have the DC samplers that preview Watchmen and The Dark Knight, but... If you go to try to turn those into CGC, they're not going to label those as first appearances. They're nice little thing, uh, things for collectors to have for historical preference, but that's about it. I picked this up for maybe, well, no, I know I picked it up for a dollar probably about three or four years ago out of a dollar bin. Miracle Man number one. Uh, this is one of my favorite books in my collection. Probably only a $10 book, but I don't care. It is uh, part of one of my uh, top 10 favorite runs of all time. Here's number 16. Um, Alan Moore had just this incredible run on Miracle Man 1 through 16. It was originally published, the first handful of stories, in um, Warrior magazine. And then, I don't know what really happened. Maybe there was a falling out or whatever. But Alan ended up... Um, getting the publishing rights to Eclipse, and with, like, issue seven, they started publishing new stories to finish his uh, initial story arc, which ran from Miracle Man 1 through 16, which I do own ex with the exception of number 15, but I just did buy it on eBay. I broke down and bought a book on eBay again, uh, and, uh, which will complete one, you know, one of the greatest runs of all time. Um, yeah, nothing much more can be said about this run that uh, has been said better and multiple times over. Must have stuff. The Secret Service, number one. The Leno Francis Yu um, variant. A book that I had no interest in when it initially came out, and then I saw Kingsman on cable last year, and uh, I had to seek it out. Good stuff, and I would like to uh, seek out the rest of this miniseries. Star Slayer number two from Pacific Comics. This is the first appearance of the Rocketeer by the late great Dave Stevens, who um, was just an incredible illustrator, incredible artist. Taken far, far too early. He, he never really even got to like have his peak of doing like mainstream work. It's too bad. Star Wars Tales number nine, cover A. And cover B with the old style boxing fight cover, which I just love. This was a really fun comic too. Uh, Vader versus Maul. If you're not a com I, as a comic book geek, as a Star Wars geek, how can you resist that? Here we have Battle Chasers, and unless I um, maybe I stated this, I don't know. This is like the second or third time that I'm trying to uh, film this video. But um, the way I have it structured was basically everything that I just showed you was like all miscellaneous indie comics uh, by miscellaneous companies, rather. And now I'll be showing you off all my image semi-keys and whatnot, and then I'll end, end it off with like the Valiant stuff. So right here we have Battle Chasers number one, which was a super hot book when it first came out. Did they ever finish the story arc, the original story arc? I mean, I know it went on a hiatus. When uh, Joe Madeira went off to um, do video games or whatever. But did they ever finish the story arc? I'm, I'm not sure. But this was a book that was super hot when it came out. And then went and faded into obscurity. And then sometime last year I noticed it uh, starting to pop up around the area. Uh, in my local comic book shops on the wall for like $10-$15. Dollars. 
why, I have no idea. It does have a very cool wraparound cover, though. I'll give it that much. Black Science, number one. This is the Midtown Comics variant. Um, <clears throat> I would definitely be buying this, at least in trades. It's a very interesting concept. Some first appearances here. Um, written by Rick Remender, which is the main draw. I've become a big Rick Remender fan uh, over the past year. And um, but I am just so far behind with all the back issues that I buy and the bi-weekly uh, regular pull list. So... Down the line, I'll definitely like to look into it. But cool book to have. The Darkness, number zero, or Witchblade, number ten, whichever you prefer. prefer. Um, this is the first appearance of Jackie Estesado, who would eventually become the, the holder of the, the Darkness. Gen 13, number one, kind of like um, Battle Chasers, number one. This was a book that was super hot. Back in the day, when my this was my brother's favorite book back in the nineties, and uh, when he initially bought this miniseries, it was at the peak of their popularity. So I want to say he paid probably like forty dollars for this first issue, and you know issues two through four weren't cheap either of this mini. So, um, but once again, fell into obscurity after a while, and over the past year or so, I've seen this once again starting to pop up on walls at the local comic book shops within that 10 to $15 range, which, I don't know, maybe it's the people that were younger back then that, you know, were into Gen 13 that are older now or are searching out these books like a lot of us do when, you know, we get that nostalgia bug. Either way, very cool. And anytime that you can have Jim Lee and J. Scott Campbell in the same book together, uh, that that's never a bad thing. God Country number one, cover A, book that has a lot of hype behind it, and um, I don't know. I mean, I thought the story was pretty good, but it wasn't enough to really grab me. Maybe I gotta grab issues two and um, three and like really give it a good read and give it a second shot. But I thought the art was very bland on the, uh, at least the interiors. Seven to Eternity, uh, cover B, number one. And cover A. Now here is a series that I have been enjoying. It's only up to issue number five right now, but um, I'm really glad that I ended up just snatching this up the, the week that it came out because boy, this book is, um, who knows if it's, um, you know, topped off as of yet, but I really like it. It's, um, you know, the, the main draw for me was that it was written by Rick Remender and uh, drawn by Jerome Pena, who I was become a big fan of them as a creative team from their work on Uncanny X-Force. Can't list your indie keys without a staple like Spawn number one in there. Now once again this book will probably only be worth ten dollars in high grade if that with the exception of the, the new stand copy but I would just feel like I would be doing a social injustice if I had a list of my indie keys and didn't list Spawn number one on there. As with this, Spawn number nine, first appearance of Angela, Walking Dead number 100, the Sylvester variant, which I just bought for cover price from Midtown last year. No one really was interested in it, and now it goes for like $20, $25. I mean, it's nowhere near what the, the second print is, but for some reason there is some um, some people that, uh, there is interest for this uh, for this issue. Of course, it's the first appearance of Negan and the death of Glenn. And the last image book I have is Witchblade number twenty five, um, Michael Turner variant edition, where it has a uh, Witchblade and Fathom together. Moving on to the Valiant goodness. The first year or so of Valiant Comics is just great stuff. Who cares if it was the 1990s? I, I mean, that was really good stuff. Jim Shooter was channeling his Stan, Stan Lee-ness. So, um, Archer and Armstrong, number zero. Um, first appearance of Archer and Armstrong. Eternal Warrior, number four. First appearance of Bloodshot. A majority of these I dug out of dollar bins too, so it's great that they're um, actually catching some fire over the past like 
two years or so. Or maybe three. Harbinger number one. <clears throat> now this was a purchase that went awry about three years ago. I bought this. It was um, advertised as near mint and with everything included. And then I opened it up and it was missing the coupon. So I contacted the seller and he ended up just <clears throat> giving it to me for free with, instead of me having to send it back, which was cool. Now three years ago, this was almost like a throwaway comic without the coupon in it. But nowadays, it's more along the lines of, like, say, the first appearance of Hobgoblin and Amazing Spider-Man without the tattoos. Not a throwaway comic uh, by any means. I want to say it goes for between, I don't know, $15 to $25 online. Hobbiger number two, which um, this one and Hobbiger number three have the coupons included. So just keep an eye out for that if you're buying the first, what is it, I think maybe the first six issues of Harbinger, yeah, which I do have, but I want to say the, it's only the first three that are really in demand. There's also, I think, I want to say issue number nine that has the first appearance of Hardcore. But um, good stuff, good stuff to have. Magnus Robot Fighter number one. This is where uh, the whole Valiant <clears throat> revolution began back in the 90s. And... Uh, cool book. I wouldn't pay any more than $10 tops for it online. In a lot of cases, it can be had cheaper. Magnus Robot Fighter number 12, which I bought for like three bucks last year. And then, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, uh, maybe like two weeks later, I ended up finding this copy <laughs> for a dollar. Both very high grade. Um, both kind of like Harbinger number one. This was one of those sought after Valiant Keys in the 90s. And it has the first uh, modern appearance of Torok the Dinosaur Hunter. We have Rai, number zero, which has the origin of Bloodshot. Solar, Man of the Atom, number one, which has some great interior Barry Windsor Smith art, which is what I always say about Barry Windsor Smith art, but it's always true every time. And, uh, yeah, the, the origin segments are all drawn by Barry Windsor Smith, and they are spectacular. Super dry throat going on. Solar Man of the Atom, number three, which is the first appearance of Toyo Harada. So if the shared Valiant universe ever does come to fruition on the big screen, this will be the, the big baddie of it all, most likely. Solar, Man of the Atom, number 10, first print. Um, it's coming off horribly right now between the Mylar and the black cover and the lighting. Um, but if you are ever going to like be looking out for this book, just be sure to look out for the uh, if it has a Roman numeral in the top uh, Valiant box corner in, in the top left-hand uh, corner of the comic. Because it does have a second print, but you have to be pretty much right up on it to uh, be able to tell. One of my favorite characters from the Valiant Universe, XO Man of War. Highly underrated comic book right here. If you can pick this one up in, in the wild, which you probably can, uh, in a high grade, I would definitely go for it. And lastly, to end off the Valiant and Indie Keys, XO Man of War number four, which contains the first cameo appearance of uh, Shadow Man, even though, if I remember correctly, I don't believe he... Um, appears in costume in this issue. All right, so that will end, finally, my uh, my my key series, my uh, my key issue series from DC to Marvel to Indie, my, my magazines, my graphic novels, and it's been real fun. It's been nostalgic fun, and it's been uh, a reason for me to get off my procrastinating butt and finally my light off a lot of my keys. So I thank you all for watching it. Quick correction, on a previous comic book um, collection spotlight video, I stated that this was the fourth appearance of Sabretooth. It is not. It's actually the... No, I stated it was the third appearance of Sabretooth, and it's actually the fourth. I almost messed it up again. So, just tried my best not to put any alternative facts out there. Now, let's move on to the comic book tag from Mr. Gory J. And it is my pleasure, sir, to start it off with being an ex-geek. 
X Uncanny X-Men number 266, the first appearance of the Raging Cajun Gambit. Number 9, the New Mutants number 87, the first appearance of Cable, which uh, this comic has seen an uptick as of lately, seeing that uh, Cable has been cast. Number eight, Batman number 608, second print, Jim Lee variant. Uh, one of my, probably, oh, definitely one of my top five Batman covers of all time. Very iconic. Uh, Batman done by my favorite artist of all time. And this is probably in my top ten favorite Batman storylines. Just a fun storyline. It's not um, in the same ballpark as, say, uh, The Dark Knight or Year One or The Killing Joke. But definitely fun, and it definitely... Um, revamp the Batman franchise for another generation. Great stuff. Okay, number seven. Batman, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn's introduction to the DC universe, the world, the main, the main DC universe pro uh, proper, and just an incredibly iconic um, Alex Ross cover. I, I'm a big Alex Ross fan, and um, yeah, very happy. I want to say I pick, picked this up in January. Okay, what are we at now? Number six. Hobbinger, number one, with the coupon included. Thank you. Like, after uh, I went through that finagle with the first uh, Hobbinger book, I was, like, kind of bummed. So I went right back at it again. I ended up finding this for, like, 15 bucks. So... Now, this one is pretty much near mint condition, but um, it's missing the, the coupon. Another thing to look out for with these books, and they were a low print run too, is they are known for uh, factory spine splits, which uh, this one has a very, very tiny one, almost at the top of the spine right there. But I've, I've read from other collectors on there that it will put like a, like a hybrid like this down to like a, a 9.0, 9.1, which I'm totally fine with, especially at only paying $15 for it. But definitely a very cool book to able to uh, add to my collection. And as a Valiant fan, anyone that was collecting Valiant back in the early 1990s, if you didn't buy this when it first came out, this book was like a ghost. And when it was around, it was very expensive. So very cool. Hobbinger number one, first appearance of the Hobbinger kids. Coming in at number five is Preacher Number One, one of my all-time favorite series. Uh, it was a very good time of collecting for me when I could, uh, when I was collecting both Preacher and Hitman, and Garth Ennis was making a name for himself. But great stuff. I know the the series, at least in my opinion, hasn't hit uh, on all cylinders at all. It wasn't great. It didn't knock it out of the park, but I don't think it's exactly sucked either. And I'm looking forward to season two. Spawn number one, um, the black and white variant version. This is one of the more rare variants, I guess, out there. And this was given to me by my brother last year, so sentimental value too. And something very cool to have to kind of collect, uh, complete my spawn set of Malibu Sun 13, the regular standard spawn number one, and this issue of spawn. I have a pretty good uh, run of Spawn, actually. Probably, like, the first 70 issues or so until I stop buying it. But great stuff. Um, Todd McFarlane kept me coming back for a long, long time. Speaking of which, Amazing Spider-Man number 300. Um, actually, New Stand variant, which I didn't state the last time I showed this book off. A book that I just picked up um, at the end of last year. Or maybe in the middle of last year. I can't even remember. But great book to have. Um, a book that I picked up a long time ago when it first came out. When I didn't know who Todd McFarlane was. But uh, I was really impressed by him. Because what little I've seen on the film from Detective Comics and The Hulk. And then on Amazing Spider-Man. I felt this was an artist that was going to blow up. And, and he did. But for some reason or another I sold this book when it was worth like 30 or $40 dollars. And uh, regretted it ever since. So picked it up again last year. Not for 30 or $40, unfortunately. But sometimes with this uh, hobby, you have to spend a little bit of money here and there. 
Okay, coming in at number two. That was number three, if I, if I forgot to say it. Um, New Mutants, number 98. Pick this one up for like five bucks back in the 90s in a regular long, long box. Super high grade. Um, Deadpool has become one of my uh, favorite characters over the past three or four years or so. Really got in, uh, really have gotten into this character. And um, after the movie, forget about it. So, great stuff. And to end it all off, which will probably be no one's surprise, Batman Adventures, number 12. First appearance of Harley Quinn in comics. Um, probably just a VF Plus copy, but I don't care. It's, it's definitely in my top 10. Not only top 10 modern uh, comics, but probably in top 10 comics in my collection, period. So, that's all I have for this week. I will be back next week with a good old-fashioned comic book haul. Thank you for all for watching this comic book uh, collection spotlight series, focusing in on my uh, keys, um, minor, medium, and major. And um, this was just a quick disclaimer. This wasn't about bragging about what I have whatsoever. This is just um, almost like a tip of the hat of uh, to some of the other posters, that, some of the videos that I used to watch of them showcasing their their collections like uh, Comic Horror 410 and um, Omega Shin Ryu Ryuken. Basically, they gave me the blueprint for what this series ended up becoming. And hopefully I can see um, you guys out there post similar series like this. I love looking at other people's collections as well. So um, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you <laughs> if you want to see like a really like hardcore collection, I would go to uh, Lee, um, like... Oh, like I said, Comic Order 410, Mega Shin, Ryukin, Batsman fan, um, Mercenar, of course, um, and countless others that just have collections that blow mine right out of the water. So uh, that's all I have for this week. I will be back next week, like I said, with a good old-fashioned, long-overdue comic book haul. Uh, thank you all for watching, liking, subscribing, um, commenting, and um, yeah, enjoy your weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Be good to each other. See ya.